Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be continuing our study on uh, this uh, subtopic which is called specific heat capacity. So before this, we will uh, just to give you a short recap uh, on what we have done so far. Uh, we have talked about, uh, sorry, uh, we have talked about what is the meaning of heat capacity. Okay, heat capacity is muatan haba, how much heat uh, can actually go in. Okay, so we remember we looked at this picture and we said that, oh, okay, the sea is you know, cold and the sand is hot and we find that actually the sand uh, okay, uh, is, uh, it, it only takes a little bit of heat. Uh, okay, it, it can only fit in a little bit of heat before the temperature rises. Okay, so we find uh, that this heat capacity actually affects the temperature rise. Okay, if it has a very small heat capacity, means the temperature will rise much faster. Okay, and if there's a very big heat capacity, means it can take in more heat. Okay, and uh, it won't really night uh, suhu Okay, so you know somebody who has a big heat capacity is like somebody yang sangat panjang sabar lah. Okay, can take a lot of heat before they finally night suhu. But itu pun night one darjah Celsius. Okay, so. And then after that, we looked at uh, we looked at specific heat capacity, okay. And we were looking at all these numbers. This is also found in page one hundred and twenty-eight in your textbook. And uh, we realized uh, that when we're talking about specific heat capacity, the big difference between the original uh, definition of heat capacity and this specific heat capacity is that is the word specific lah. Okay, specific really refers to one kilogram. Okay, which is why the definition for specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of material by one degree Celsius or one, kil, or one Kelvin. Okay, uh, at this point in time, uh, the, the unit for temperature doesn't really matter at the, point, at the moment. Now. Okay, it can be degree Celsius, it can be Kelvin. But the most important thing now is that if you're using degree Celsius, then our unit would be Joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. If you're using Kelvin, then the unit for the specific heat capacity would be Joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay, just to remind you also that the unit for Q, which is a quantity of heat, is the same. It's always Joule. All forms of energy the unit is always Joule, whether it's kinetic energy, potential energy, uh, even electrical energy, but electrical energy is slightly different. Okay, heat energy, okay, all these are all Joules. Okay, Joules, the standard unit for, uh, for energy. Okay, so we're going to start from here. Lah. Hold on, people still coming in. Okay, so standard, uh, sorry, the, the thing that we've talked about is if the C is very small, uh, okay, if the value of the C is small, that means it will be hot faster, it will be cold faster, it will be cold means, let's say, panas panas kan, sudah kan, and then aku pasti biar. Okay, so it will become cooler much faster. Okay, and, and since it becomes hot faster, the increase or decrease in temperature will be much higher. Okay, as opposed, as op, sorry, as opposed uh, to something uh, with a very high C. Okay, with a high, high specific heat capacity means it's able to take in more heat and not really night temperature so much. So it can, it, it, it takes a very long time to heat it up. It takes a long time for it to cool down as well. And the increase or the decrease in temperature uh, is also much uh, smaller. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's also much smaller. So when we understand this, uh, then we know why. Uh, let, let's say cooking pot lah makan. Okay, usually the handle, uh, we must use a material with a high C. Because we don't want the material to become hot faster. But instead, the body of the quality, we want it to be something that has a low C. Okay, a low specific heat capacity. Because we want it to faster heat up. Okay, otherwise uh, we keep you know we keep supplying fire to it uh, and it's like okay and for example uh, if you have a plastic it's not a very good example if you have a okay fine if you have a wooden quali okay as opposed to a metal quali uh, 
No, it doesn't make sense at all la, to cook on a wooden kuali because wood la, has a very high specific capacity. Okay, it takes a very long time la, for it to be hot. Itu pun kalau dia tidak terbakar atau terhangus dahulu. <laughs> okay, I was talking to somebody yesterday about burnt cheesecake. Kau baru saya terikat ini hangus-hangus. Okay, so, 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 you know, but, 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 okay, having said that, it is true. Sometimes it is good na, for us to have materials with high C. Okay, for example, na, if you have this object called a slow cooker. Okay, slow cooker, a slow cooker is a, like a, it's like a pot, okay, it's an electrical device. Na. Okay, but the material that is inside na, has a higher C, okay, has a higher C than normal pots. Okay, but it's still quite low, la, okay, relatively. La. Because the point is, it's supposed to heat up slowly. Okay, we don't want the... Because you know, sometimes when you cook food, la, if you heat it up too fast, then they can cepat hangus, which you don't want. Okay, but we want it to cook it nice and slow. You know, so that, uh, so that everything, so that the cooking uh, becomes very more sakata. Okay, so, so, so yeah. Okay, so so you know when you think about it, uh, actually, especially during this MCO la, uh, if you have been baking a lot uh, then you will notice you know different different types of material uh, will give you different outcomes for the cake. Uh. Let's say you make a cake uh, you put it in a you put it in a tin pan uh, Okay, a, a, a cake pan uh, that is made out of tin. Uh, and you put it inside a glass, uh, glass pan. Okay, yeah. So recently I was like making banana bread. Uh, banana bread. So the first batch I did, uh, I put it in a tin pan. And then the second batch I did, I did it in a glass pan. Uh. Then I realized, oh, I see the glass one, uh, it tastes like a little bit less burnt uh, than the tin one. Okay, and I believe uh, it has something to do with the difference between the materials. Uh. You know, the tin pan uh, has obviously a much lower C, lower sp specific capacity. So when we bake it, uh, okay, it will heat up faster. Okay, and because it heats up faster, so my banana bread in the tin pan <laughs> came out a little bit burnt. Uh, okay, it didn't burn, okay, but it just tasted like, mm, okay, it tastes a little bit burnt. Still tasty, okay, because I made it. Uh. Okay, but the one in the glass, because I had no more cake pans, tin cake pan, and I still had a lot of batter, so I put the remaining ones into uh, I put the remaining uh, the remaining batter into the a glass. This one uh, is can also be used for baking uh, but usually people use it to make like stew. So I did it in there. Okay, and then uh, it turned out a, little, a lot more softer. Okay, maybe a little bit too soft. Okay, maybe because it took such a long time to cook. Okay, uh, cook through uh. Okay, so you know all these applications in cooking uh, are quite interesting now uh, when you're talking about specific heat capacity. Alright, so we talked about a lot of applications okay, in the past class, so which I'm not going to go to today. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, in terms of transformation and energy. Okay, remember uh, that uh, energy is not created. Uh, we transfer from one mode to another. Okay, and we did this. Uh, some of you did this and you explored this uh, in your PBL. Uh, okay, for example, some, uh, there was one or two of you that, uh, that said uh, that you know, you are, uh, you are able to change kinetic energy uh, into electrical energy. And that's how you will power your car. Okay, some of your, some of your, uh, your car is powered, uh, or your car battery uh, okay, is powered uh, by the motion of the car itself. As long as the car is moving, okay, then, you know, there will be electricity uh, charged and supplied into the battery. Uh, okay, so that's a form of transformation of energy. Okay, another one that is very popular among some of your designs are solar power. Okay, so that's light energy changed to electrical energy. So likewise, uh, we can also do some things to change from Chontonia kinetic energy to heat energy. Now these formulas are new. Uh. Half mv squared is the formula for kinetic energy which you already studied in chapter 3. Uh, sorry, in form 3. Okay, so uh, kinetic energy uh, change to heat energy just simply means that half mv squared must equal to mc theta. This mc theta comes from the formula that involves the specific heat capacity. Okay, just to remind you. Lah. Okay, so, uh, so, you know, think of um, energy uh, in terms of the fact that they can interchange. Okay, especially when you're changing from one mode of energy to another mode. 
we assume that okay there is one very big assumption which i'm going to write over here okay so sorry. okay so the assumption uh, assumption okay there's a very big assumption that we have to find is that there is no energy loss okay to surrounding now this assumption is very important because in real life uh, there is always going to be some energy loss okay there's always going to be some energy loss for example a car you know when you turn up a car the, more, the main energy that is supposed to be used in a car is kinetic energy. But all of us know that, you know, whatever petrol you supply into the car, okay, doesn't all go towards, you know, kinetic energy. Some of it is lost in heat energy because of the engine. Some of it is lost in sound energy, you know, because, we, well, we don't have that kind of technology yet, but there's no such thing as a silent car. Okay, so it's going to produce some sound, okay? Um, so, so, you know, there's all this loss of energy and then the remaining energy goes into the kinetic energy. So when we talk about this transformation of energy, or whenever you do calculations that involve uh, heat energy, uh, you need to make this very important assumption, which is that there is no energy loss to surroundings. Some other is heat energy or, you know, there's whatever energy. Okay, there is no energy loss to surroundings. Likewise, gravitational potential energy can also be converted to heat energy using this. This is the formula for gravitational potential, which you have learned in Form 3. Okay, again, equals to MC theta or MC O la fine. It's a good time to remember this formula. Okay, remember that this O refers to, sorry, theta, MC theta. This theta, uh, this is how you write theta. So like this, that's how I write it. La. Okay, so theta refers to the difference in temperature, which you will come to in a while. Okay, now something that is probably new uh, and is specific for this section is electrical energy. Sometimes we provide electrical energy and we change it to heat energy. Okay, for example, an electric kettle. Okay, think about it. Uh. Electric kettle is, we turn on the electric kettle, so we provide electrical energy. But the point of the electrical kettle is to heat up the water. Uh. Okay, so it changes electrical energy into heat energy. Can you think of another device that changes electrical energy to heat energy? Okay, so one is electric kettle. Anyone think of another one? Sorry, yes, this is a question that I need you to answer. If you can answer in the chat section, you can answer in the chat section. If you can answer, uh, you, know, you can turn on the time. Okay, very good. So some of you are writing here, iron is another one. Okay, below cost taker baju, you turn on the electricity and it changes from electrical energy to heat energy. Okay, another one can be if you use a shower, okay, your shower heater also changes electrical energy to heat energy. So there are a lot of things, huh? okay, there are a lot of things actually, thanks Adina. Uh, there are a lot of things that actually change, you know, electrical energy to heat energy. So I just want you to realize that whenever that happens, okay, the electrical energy you supply, okay, uh, I will come to this in a while, okay, up in the P, up in the P, yeah, will be changed into heat energy in terms of MC theta, okay, or MCO. All right, very good, Umar. So another one is electric stuff, okay, the toaster oven uh, also can. You turn on this one, that's how you toast the bread uh, from the heat energy, makan. Okay, but remember, whenever this happens, okay, the assumption that we must make uh, is must be very clear that we do not lose any energy uh, to surrounding. Okay, some all right, hair dryer is also another one. Good. All right, so we don't lose any heat energy to surrounding. Okay. So next time when you you know when you're looking around, when you're doing something that is involving electrical energy, think about whether there is a transformation of energy happening there. Is this electrical energy being used to provide heat energy? Most likely, the other kaitan dengan this formula. But remember the assumption. Okay, I'm going to repeat this for the third time. Huh? The assumption is that we do not lose any energy to the surrounding. Means fully, huh? electrical energy fully convert to heat energy. Okay, but we know that you know we know that. Let's say in the case of hair dryer, lah. In the case of hair dryer, it's not true. 
not 100% of the electrical energy goes into heat energy. Some energy is lost because number one, you have to move the fan. So that it changes the kinetic energy. Secondly, uh, you also lose some energy in terms of sound. Okay, unless you're a proud owner of uh, a certain brand of hair dryers like Dyson, uh, okay, the hair dryer is virtually no sound one. It's like so hey, but you don't even realize that there's a hair dryer. Okay, so but usually in hair dryers, kind it's this huge sound like Whoa! okay, so that you know some energy loss over there. Alright. So Let's listen. I mean, let's look at this conversation that people are having. Uh, yeah, Dyson is very expensive, but I hope that they will sponsor my YouTube channel. Anyway, how does the specific head, how can we determine the specific heat capacity in the lab? Okay, so uh, this conversation over here says there are two experiments. Okay, sorry, I'm going to put my head over here. Alright, so there are two experiments uh, that we need to talk about. Uh, so, which is the experiment? First one is to determine the specific capacity of a liquid. That's the first experiment. Okay, and the second experiment is to determine the specific heat capacity of a solid. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit difficult for us to do in the lab, uh, the specific heat capacity of a gas. Lah. Okay, which is why at your level, at form 4 level, we only focus on how to determine the C of a liquid and the C of a solid. Whenever I say C, uh, it's the letter C, which is specific heat capacity. Lah. Okay, so let's talk about the experiment to determine the specific heat capacity of liquid. And this is found in page 129. Yeah, yeah. okay, 129 uh, in your textbook. So you can take a look at it. Uh. So the first step, uh, the, these are the apparatus and materials. Everything is in the textbook, so I'm just going to quickly run through this. The first step is you wrap the empty beaker with tissue paper, and then you measure the mass okay, of the empty beaker by using an electronic balance. Okay, then after that, you pour in the water and you measure the mass. And the purpose of doing this, okay, if you want to write it at the side of your book, uh, your textbook, uh, the purpose of doing this is because we want to measure the mass of the water. We're not interested in the beaker. We just want to know how much is the mass of the water. Because remember, uh, the formula for specific capacity is C equals to Q over M delta eta. Okay, the difference in temperature, the heat energy supplied in a while, but the first thing we need to find out is the mass of the water. How much water we're using uh, to calculate the C. Okay, and that's why step one and step two are uh, first the empty beaker and then the beaker with the water so that we can count the mass of the water. Step three, okay, calculate the <laughs> wow. Okay, the mass of the water by using the formula M2 minus M1. Okay, then after that you measure the initial temperature of the water. Now we're looking at how we're going to measure the delta theta. Delta theta is change in temperature. Okay, so we use a thermometer. Then we heat up the water for five minutes with the help of immersion heater. Okay, I'm just going to talk about this for a while. Five minutes, uh, okay, five minutes in terms of seconds. Can you change this to seconds for me? How much is five minutes in seconds? Da -di -da -di -da. Five minutes in seconds is oh dear. Okay, five minutes is about three hundred seconds lah. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here for a while because uh, this will come in handy later lah. Okay, now can I change this timer into more than five minutes? Sure, no problem. Okay, but obviously the longer time you heat it up, then the change in temperature is gonna be bigger lah. Okay, so, but no worries about it. It can be 5 minutes, it can be 10 minutes, but for all intents and purposes, our, yeah, our textbook says 5 minutes. Okay, so we're going to use 5 minutes for a while. I'm going to leave these 300 seconds here just to see how it goes. Then after you turn off the power and you measure the final temperature. So you had the original temperature, kamu panaskan, and then you had the final temperature. So you can count the delta, the delta theta. Okay, let's say the original temperature is 27. Lah. Okay, original is 27. So, lepas 5 minutes ko panaskan, it becomes 50. So, what is the difference in temperature? It will be 50 minus 27, which is 23 degrees Celsius. And that one goes into the delta theta. Okay, so step one, how to calculate the mass. 
Step two, how to calculate the delta theta. Okay, and this time over here becomes very important. Okay, which is step seven. Oh, sorry, it's fine. It's here. So now calculate the specific heat capacity with the data collected. So the only problem now we have is how do we calculate the Q? Okay, because we can calculate the M very easy. And no water, with water, then you minus. Then the delta theta is before you kasi panas, five minutes later after you kasi panas, the temperature is just minus. Okay, that makes sense. But now the problem is how do we calculate the Q? Because we need the Q to calculate the C. So we do that. Okay, so let's lay out all the information first. Lah, okay, so this one kita sudah tahu. Okay, how to calculate the mass of the water. This is the first step. Okay, second one is how to calculate the delta theta. This is the second step. Okay, so now the only thing left is how to calculate the Q. Okay, so that's why I say we need the time. Huh? So if it is five minutes, and as uh, I can't remember one, so I think it was 10, 10 will answer this now, 300 seconds. Okay, so this is the one. How we calculate the Q, uh, okay, this can be E or this can be Q, uh, doesn't matter. Q equals to the power times the time, but the time must be in seconds. This is a rule, okay, which you will learn later in uh, Form 5. Okay, in Form 5, I think first chapter, uh, you will learn this uh, about power. But for now, just remember, the Q, uh, the Q is counted from the power of the heater times the time in seconds. Okay, it must be in seconds. Uh, in your textbook, at the small box at the bottom of page 129, uh, there's a smart info over there. Okay, that's, it's uh, stated over there for you. Uh. Okay, so, therefore, we can say that PT equals to MC delta theta. Okay, otherwise, okay, uh, if you're using the, origin, uh, the formula for C, uh, so C equals to PT, Okay, over M delta theta. Okay, delta theta, you calculate from here. M, you calculate from here. T is the amount of time you heat up. P must be given to you because you need to know how much power is supplied uh, by the electrical component. This one is not calculate one. Uh. P is usually given to you. Okay, for example, uh, in a, let's say for example, an iron lah. Uh, Okay, and iron, uh, okay, actually P uh, refers to, P refers to power. Okay, and you know that it is power, uh, kalau dia punya unit adalah unit, what? Okay, I'm not asking WHAT, uh, tapi memang the unit for power is what? Okay, so, yeah, let me see. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, and that's the experiment on how to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid. Okay, macam mana mau kira dia punya mass of the water, macam mana mau kira dia punya difference in temperature, okay, and then after that, how to calculate lah. Remember that the power of the heater, okay, because if you remember from the, okay, if you remember from this, ah, the heater, the power is given, okay, it, they memang don't need to measure, you just have to read lah, find out from the machine lah, how much power it will give out. Okay, when you kasi panaskan. Okay, all devices uh, have this power label, uh, okay, which you will, uh, which you can know uh, from reading the this one. Okay, so let's go to a little bit of discussion. The discussion questions are also in your textbook, I believe. Yeah, in page 130. Yeah. So the first of all, why do we need to wrap the beaker with tissue paper? Okay, this is important because we want to prevent the heat loss to surrounding. Remember the assumption I talked about before when we were talking about the transformation of energy? If electrical energy transfer to heat energy, we make one very big assumption and the assumption is that there is no heat loss to surroundings. But in the experiment, we have to take steps. Huh? Okay, we have to take precaution steps. Okay, so this is actually a precaution. Okay, langkah berjaga-jaga. So the precaution says we wrap the beaker with tissue paper because we don't want the heat uh, to escape to surroundings. Okay? Uh, and, and that's the reason why. Uh, okay? so, and that's why we can make this assumption that when we do this formula, sorry, when we count this one, uh, the assumption is that there is no 
heat loss to surroundings. I have said this, uh, I think this is the fifth time I'm saying this already. Lah. Okay, but it's a very important assumption. It's important because number one, it keeps getting asked in exam, okay, if ever. And number two, uh, people always tend to forget this assumption. Okay, so don't forget it. And that's why we wrap the beaker with tissue paper. Second one, why is the final temperature not taken as soon as the five minutes heating time ends? Okay, if you take a look at your textbook, uh, okay, if you take a look at your textbook, the step number nine, uh, okay, if you read step number nine, it says, after five minutes, switch off the immersion heater. Record the highest temperature reading as the final water temperature. It's after you turn off five minutes, the temperature is still going to rise. Okay, obviously, lah, because there's still heat you know, being given a little bit. Lah. So we wait for a while until you reach the highest. So because this is where nah, this is where thermal equilibrium comes in. You know, the the water heater ah, provides the heat. Oh dear. Hold on. Ah. I'm gonna go back into this one. Ah. So in this one, can the water heater provides the heat. Okay, provides the heat into the water. So you know, the two things are touching us. Uh, so there's going to be a transfer of energy. Okay, so we need to wait for thermal equilibrium to reach uh, before we can finally take the final reading. Okay, oh, sorry, which is, uh, oh dear, lost. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm here, oh dear. Okay, so, so the thermal equilibrium uh, is achieved and we can get a more accurate result. Okay, we get a more accurate result by following the step in the textbook now. We take the highest reading possible because that's when thermal equilibrium happens. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the next experiment, which is to determine the specific heat capacity of a solid. So, yang tadi liquid. Okay, so Karam, we're going to look at one aluminium block and we're going to determine the specific capacity. This is slightly easier, but you see, uh, the steps are still the same. We need to find out how to determine, okay, okay, we need to find out how to determine three things. Number one, how to determine the mass of the aluminium. Secondly, how to determine the delta theta. Okay, and thirdly, how to determine the energy. So this one is the same as just now, probably. Okay, you heat it up for five minutes and remember five minutes is 300 seconds. Okay, and then the power of the heater is given to you. So a bit the machine. Okay, delta theta before you heat up and then after you turn off, you wait for the temperature to rise to the maximum before you, that's the final temperature. Okay, so how do you think we're going to determine the mass of the block of aluminum? Okay, let's take a look. Same thing, we wrap the aluminium block with tissue paper. And the reason we do that is the same reason as the one that we did with the water just now. Except that we don't wrap the water, lah. we wrap the beaker that has the water. But we do it because we're holding on to this one very important assumption, which is for the sixth time, okay, no heat loss to surroundings. We want to avoid the heat loss. We want all the heat to be kept inside. That's why we wrap the aluminium block with tissue paper. And it doesn't have to be tissue paper. Lah. Okay, honestly. Um, it can be a cloth. It can be, you know, a heat-resistant cloth. Okay, there are many things. Lah. But of course, since we're doing this in a lab, uh, you know, the most easily available material is tissue paper. Okay, so we use tissue paper in this sense. But it can be cloth. Okay, no problem. So record the initial temperature of the aluminium block. Okay, as theta 1. Okay, this is normal, just like the water just now. We turn on the heater and we heat up the aluminium block for 5 minutes. And this 5 minutes, as I said, is 300 seconds. And then after that, we turn off the heater and then we record the final temperature. So we wait for the temperature to go up a little bit more. Walaupun kita sudah off the pamanas, okay, we wait for the temperature to heat up a bit more. Because what is happening over there? Thermal equilibrium. Okay, we wait for thermal equilibrium to happen, then we take the highest temperature. Okay, and then after that, we can calculate the delta theta law quite easily done. Okay, then 
Uh, and because this is aluminium block, uh, obviously, if you want to determine the mass, very simple, uh, just throw it on the weighing machine, uh, okay, throw it on the scale, uh, okay, then you can determine the mass. It's not like the water just now. Uh, the water, we have to put it, we have to measure the beaker and then put in the water and then measure the beaker and the water so that we can get the water. Of course, you can't just throw water uh, on the measuring scale, uh, obviously, okay, so that's why we need to take that extra step for liquid. But for aluminium, because it's already in a block, okay, so it's so much more simpler. All right, so the mass of the aluminium block, okay, for example, is one kilogram. Now we use this as an example. So the heating time is five minutes as always, times 60 will be 300 seconds. Initial temperature, final temperature, we can finally calculate the difference in temperature. And then we use the energy from the power supply equals to PT, and we find that we will have this PT equals to MC delta theta, which is changed from electrical energy, berubah pergi tenaga, abah. Okay, so, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so that's the thing. Lah. Okay, and then we use that to calculate the C, PT over M delta theta. Okay, a couple of questions uh, that we need to talk about. First of all, what can be done to obtain a better thermal contact between the bulb of the thermometer and the aluminium bulb? Okay. Now, the reason why this question is asked uh, is because in the lab, uh, okay, in the lab, the aluminium block uh, is like this one. So, aluminium block is usually a cylindrical shape, okay, and there's a hole in the middle somewhere here. And this hole is where you put the thermometer in. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so the hole is where you put the thermometer in. To measure, uh, to measure the temperature lah. But the problem is the hole is pretty big lah. Okay, dia bukan na, um, dia bukan like chun chun kau kasi masuk itu thermometer because thermometer got many many different sizes. So the hole in here, okay, has to be quite big lah to fit you know a bigger thermometer. So what happens ah uh, if let's say you put the thermometer inside here, but the thermometer is so tiny you know that there is a gap. Okay, there is a gap uh, between the thermometer and the wall of this aluminium. Okay, means they are sangat longer lah. You know, when you put the design inside, kau masih lagi boleh clang 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 di dalam. Okay, there is not ketat. Okay, so that means uh, there is going to be some heat loss over there. Okay, so what can you do? You can't. <laughs> okay, the thing that you cannot do is you cannot balut this with, you cannot balut the hole uh, with tissue paper, because it's problematic. Okay, imagine you put tissue paper inside and then the tissue paper is stuck there forever. You don't want that. Lah. Okay, so what can we do to obtain a better thermal contact? We want the thermometer to be actually touching the aluminium block. Okay, but sometimes it is not possible partly because the hole is so big and your thermometer is so small. So it's pretty loose. So what we can do is we put some oil. Okay, we put some oil inside the hole okay, so that the thermometer touch the oil, the oil touch the aluminium block, you know, and you know the heat flow is there. Okay, and that's this is a precaution that we take now for aluminium block. We don't do that with water because water is always touching the thermometer, no problem. But the aluminium block is a problem because the aluminium block is in here at the lubang. Okay, and we need to figure out a way to make sure that it is fully touching the aluminium block. Can we do that by putting some lubricating? Lubi, lu, <laughs> sorry, lubricating oil, minyak pelincir, okay, inside the hole in the aluminium block, okay, so that the touching is always there, lah. okay, thermal contact, lah. okay, yeah, that's the end of this. Question. So I hope that after this super long explanation, that you understand the slight difference, ah, between how to determine the C of a liquid and how to determine the C of the aluminium. But the step is always the same. Calculate the M, calculate the delta theta by using thermal equilibrium principle, and then calculate the heat energy, okay, by using electrical energy formula. Okay, and as a reminder, remember that this time uh, is not in minutes, it must be in seconds. And the power of the uh, device uh, is calculated in watts. So we're going to do a couple of uh, a couple of calculation questions, okay? Just to show you how the calculation involving uh, this uh, specific heat capacity works, okay? 
All right, so I can't remember whether this is in. I don't think so. But okay, you can turn to page 135. Huh? Turn to page 135 in your textbook. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I think these examples are not really from the textbook. Okay, but uh, it'll be good because I think some information in the textbook is required. Lah. Okay, right. So let's take a look at this question, this example. Lah. So you have 124 joules of heat. Okay, so I'm going to mark this down here first. So 124 joules of heat, this one we know is Q. Okay, is absorbed by a piece of copper with a mass of 150 grams. Guys, whenever you see 150 grams, the first thing you need to do is change it to kilograms, which is 0 0.15 kilograms. Don't do anything unless it is not in kilograms. Okay, at an initial temperature of 32 degrees Celsius, what is the final temperature of copper? Okay, so the specific heat capacity of copper is 387. Okay, this thing, uh, guys, this is always given. You, as I said before, uh, you are not required to memorize all the specific heat capacity. For me, there's only one specific heat capacity that you should memorize, which is water. Okay, uh, and I'm going to leave this question with you. You can type your answers out in the chat section. Uh. What is the specific heat capacity of water? Okay, you can type it out as I explain in this. Uh. So, how are we going to answer this question? Let's go back to the formula. Q equals to mc delta theta. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the problem now is we don't know what is delta theta. Okay, let's put in, uh, so 124 okay, equals to m is 0 0.15. We use kg. Okay, why we use kg? Because ta -da, the specific capacity uh, requires you to use kg. Okay, times C. C is 387. Okay, and then delta theta. Okay, so can somebody please calculate the value of delta theta for me, please, from here? Uh, two decimal places will be fine. <clears throat> Anybody? How much is delta theta? Okay, very good. Uh, Iqbal, okay, so the answer, the answer is 2.13. So, the difference in temperature is 2.13 degrees Celsius. Hold on, it should be 2.14 because kalau kita gunakan kan, 2.136 is 2.14. Okay, so 2.14 degrees Celsius. But they check up, what is the final temperature of copper? Remember, the difference in temperature is, is final minus initial temperature. Okay, equals to 0 0.14. Somebody is walking in the wind. Okay. So, if our initial temperature is 32 degrees, okay, so can we calculate our final temperature? The difference in temperature is 2.14. So, how much is our final temperature? How do I calculate this? When I move this over here, it becomes plus. So it will be 34.14 degrees Celsius. Okay, we're going to use degrees Celsius. Okay, remember that this delta theta is the temperature difference. Okay, the increase in temperature or the decrease in temperature. But it is always final temperature minus initial temperature. Sometimes the temperature goes down and it's totally fine. <clears throat> okay, it's always the difference in temperature. Okay, so remember that. Lah. So once you calculated the difference in temperature, baru kamu cari dia punya final temperature. And that's how we do it. Alright, so this is a very simple example, the simplest example lah. Okay, out of the four. Alright, <clears throat> second question. A hot glass marble of 60 grams. 
okay, and temperature 95 degrees Celsius is added to 200 gram. Okay, let's stop here for a while. Uh. First of all, I want you to change this. This is definite. Uh. We, we no use gram over here. Let's use kilogram. So this would be 0 0.2 kilogram. 60 grams would be 0. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry, 0 0.06 kilogram. Done. Okay, 0 0.06 kilogram. We must always get this out and start it off. So 60 grams, sorry, 0 0.06 kilograms has a temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. It's hot lah, because it's a hot glass marble. You put it inside water, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so drawing the situation now. So this is the water, okay, and it is 200 grams lah. So 0 0.2 kg with 25 degrees Celsius. And you have a hot marble, okay, which is, oh dear, red color lah, but pull up. Hold on, changing color. Okay, so the hot marble is 0 0.06 kg and it is very hot lah, 95 degrees Celsius. So when this goes in over here, you can be very sure that the thermal equilibrium, I mean, there's going to be a change of heat, exchange of heat. The heat from the hot glass marble is going to flow into the water and making the temperature increase. And the heat from the water is also going to flow a little bit into the hot glass marble. But what's going to happen is the temperature of the hot glass marble is going to decrease. So the question is, what is the equilibrium temperature of the system? Okay, and we make this big assumption. There is no heat exchange with the surroundings. There is no heat loss to the surroundings. Okay, so this assumption now, uh, for the eighth time already, I'm mentioning this, uh, it's very important. Okay, so let's take it one by one. Uh. I'm going to start with the, uh, with the water first. Okay, so the water, uh, the, the, the energy involved in the water is 0 0.2 times the specific heat capacity of water. Now, this is why I said, okay, it's not given here, okay, but we have to know how much is the specific heat capacity of water, people? I still haven't received any answer to that. So let's get this over and done with. How much is the specific capacity of water? If you don't know, take a look at page 128 in your textbook. Okay, very good, Dina. So it's 4,200. Okay, 4,200 uh, joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Okay, memorize this, lah, people. Actually, it will be given, lah. Tapi, I'm just going to memorize. Because in, at least in our syllabus, lah, water has the highest specific heat capacity. Okay, for us, like 4,000 degrees is very high. All right. Now, the difference in temperature, think about this. Dia asalnya 25. Okay, asalnya 25. Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? Okay, it's going to increase. Okay, so it's going to increase. Huh? So if it's going to increase, I'm going to write it as theta minus 25. Okay, I will explain this in a little bit while. Okay, final temperature minus initial temperature. Okay, final temperature minus initial temperature. Okay, then that's how we get the difference in temperature. And I'm uh, sorry, so I'm going to write down here theta. Okay, theta is the final temperature. Final temperature or otherwise known as the equilibrium temperature lah, because ini akan menjadi panas, ini akan menjadi sejuk until thermal equilibrium happens. Now you see why we have to study thermal equilibrium first. Because we're going to talk about this in specific capacity. Changing my pen to blue color now to talk about the marble. Okay, so the marble, lah, the Q for the marble will be 0 0.06 kilograms times the specific capacity is 840, okay? But, okay, and this is where the kicker happens now. It's going to decrease in temperature, okay? So because it's going to decrease in temperature, we have to write the difference in temperature slightly different. Okay, it has to be 95 minus theta. Okay? We do that, uh, okay, we do that sebab, I know, initially I said uh, that the difference in temperature is always final minus initial, okay, but 
for this calculation purposes, uh, okay, we want to keep the delta theta okay, a positive number. Okay, perubahan suhu itu kita mau kekalkan sebagai satu nombor positif. That's why we write the higher temperature first. So whenever you calculate the, the difference in temperature, think about it first. Which one is the higher temperature? For the case of the water, red color, the higher temperature is the final temperature or the equilibrium temperature. Okay. For the case of the glass marble, yang lebih tinggi, it started out as 95 and it's going to menurun. So we put it as 95 minus the equilibrium temperature. Okay. Now, when this happens, uh, and kalau ini melibatkan equilibrium temperature, so the thing that we need to remember is in equilibrium status, uh, okay, the red color Q oh, and the blue color Q okay, must be, I'm going to change now to black, okay, must be the same. Okay, so this is what happened. Thermal equilibrium, uh, so the red color Q must be equals to the blue color Q. Okay. Yeah, I know in books uh, you will see Q1 equals to Q2, la, but I'm going to use color since I have this opportunity. Uh, since I have the opportunity to use color, I'm going to use color. Okay, so, so in this case, uh, red color is 0 0.2 times 4200 okay, times theta minus 25. Okay, equals to 0 0.06 times 840 times 95 minus theta. Okay, let's take it slow and steady, yeah, guys. Can we please uh, multiply first the 0 0.2 and 4200 and 0 0.06 times 840? Okay, let's multiply this first. 0 0.2 times 4200 people? Let's give your answers to me in the chat section. Somebody else calculate this out, 0 0.06 to 8.40. This is 840, okay? So 840 times theta minus 25. How about this? 0 0.06 times 840. Wow, so kebetulan, no? ini pun 840. Cute. Okay, 50.4. Thanks, Dina. 95 minus theta. Okay. Kalau saya tidak dapat, uh, if I don't receive any objections, I'm going to assume this is true. Huh? Sorry, I, I haven't calculated. Okay, once you come to this stage, then let's do this mathematically. Huh? Multiply this and multiply this. Okay, and you multiply this and multiply this. Okay, so uh, how much is 840 times 25? Oh, sorry. 840 times 25. So this would be 840 theta minus, how much is this? 840 times 25 people, 21,000. Okay, 21,000 equals to 50.4 times 95. 4788. Okay, thanks, uh, Indina. Is everybody else awake? Uh? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, or is everybody just waiting for Edina to press the calculator because only Edina has a calculator and the rest of you what happened to your calculator? You're gonna mark up. Okay, so this is a mathematical this one, huh? nothing much this one. So we move the 50.4 over here and we put the 21,000 over here. Okay, so this will be 840 theta plus 50.4 theta equals to 50.4. Huh? equals to 4788 plus 21,000. Okay, can you calculate this please? 840, so this would be 890.4 theta equals to, how much is this? Uh, 25788, am I right? Is this correct? 25788, 4788 plus 21,000. Okay, 25788, huh? all right, thanks. So, last step, in order for us to calculate the theta, what do we do with this 890.4? We divide it. 25788 divided by 890.4. 
So, ta-da! How much is our final temperature? Final temperature, remember, uh, both the glass marble and the water will reach the equilibrium temperature. Okay? So what's our final, final answer? 28.96. Okay, so 28.96 degrees Celsius. Oh dear, my writing. Okay, just double checking. All right, very good, 28.96. So, uh, which goes to say uh, that the marble actually loses a lot of, I mean, the, the marble uh, actually decreases in temperature a lot. Okay, from 95, uh, go all the way to 28.96. A lot of this one, because it's so tiny. Okay, Manakala, the water, uh, which is like, you know, like a jillion times more, okay, it only changes so little, you know, 25 to 28.96. Three degrees of the perubahan. Okay. But because it is only one hot laugh marble. Oh, sorry. Okay. So this is how we use uh, thermal equilibrium and specific heat capacity at the same time. It's a bit long. I know it's a bit long. Uh, the example two uh, in page 135 in your textbook is another example of this one. Okay. So uh, if you don't understand, it's okay. Watch this video again uh, and see if it helps. All right, third example. So now we're going to talk about examples that involve transformation of energy. Okay, just to recap, uh, when we were talking about transformation of energy, uh, we were looking at this one. Let me see. Now, this one. Okay, so color kinetic energy is half mv squared to mc theta. Color gravitational is mgh to mco. We have been talking about this for quite some time, which is electrical to heat energy. Lah. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So a bullet traveling at a speed of 360 degree, sorry, degrees, sorry, 360 meters per second is stopped by a sandbag. So you have this bullet uh, that is traveling. Uh, somebody with nothing better to do, pergi tembak satu bullet at the sandbag. Wow, so many things, nothing better to do. Now, assuming uh, half of the energy of the bullet, oh sorry, half of the energy of the bullet becomes heat energy. Okay, take a look properly. Yeah. Half of the energy of the bullet becomes heat energy. Okay, that is absorbed by the bullet. Calculate the increase in temperature of the bullet. Okay, so let's talk about the transformation energy that happens here. First of all, transformation energy that happens here is, what's happening to me? Okay, transformation energy is kinetic energy Okay, transferring to MC theta. Okay, but dear Chakab, okay, there is a very important thing that he mentioned like, in the question. Half of the energy of the bullet becomes heat energy. So that means the kinetic energy, yeah, we have to half it some more. So half of the kinetic energy okay, becomes uh, heat energy. Okay, so let's calculate the increase in temperature. So we want, oh sorry, MC delta theta. So we want to calculate this one. Huh? The increase in temperature is kita mau tau delta theta. We're not interested in the initial and the final temperature. Kita mau tau berapa dia punya kenaikan theta. Okay, so delta theta is what we want to find. So let's substitute everything in. Okay, everything that we can lah. 360 is what? 360 meters per second is actually referring to velocity. Okay, so we have velocity here. Okay, so half times half is 1 over 4 m 360 squared equals to m. The c is given 160. 160 and this is delta theta. So the question now is, macam mana saya mau kira ini delta theta kalau saya tidak tahu ini m? Okay, but the good news is you don't have to know the m. Okay, because the m is the same. We are talking about the bullet all the time. Okay, the bullet has kinetic energy change into heat energy. So since the M is the same, okay, let's do this. Huh? Okay, let's calculate this first. 360 squared time divided by sorry times 1 over 4. How much is it? 360 squared times 1 over 4 is 32,400. Can somebody confirm this for me, please? Tiga, dua, empat, kosong, kosong. 
Yes? No? Yes? Okay. So 3, 2, 4, 0, 0, M equals to 160 M delta theta. Remember, we want to calculate delta theta. So we bring the 160 M across. Okay, 3, 2, 4, 0, 0, M over 160 M equals to delta theta. And this is where the magic happens, people. Because it's M divided by M, therefore we can cut, cut. Yay! Okay, so totally no problem. Okay, so don't worry about the M. Most likely, you are able to cut it off. <laughs> Sorry, strange language. Okay, so what is our delta theta? Okay, our delta theta is... I'm getting two different answers. Everyone is chatting with me privately. Wow, amazing. 202.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, quite easily done. This is a much easier question than the previous one. Okay, just to let you know uh, that actually the most difficult uh, is this one. Uh, okay, because this is pretty long. Okay, so once you, if you can master this, then the rest of the questions guys, is really kacang putih. You just have to remember, okay, the transformation of energy. Okay, so 202.5 degrees Celsius is pretty high. Uh, Okay, ini baru, this is not the final temperature. No? It is the increase in temperature. No? So, assuming uh, that the bullet originally, uh, let's say the bullet originally uh, is 34 degrees Celsius. Uh, originally. Uh, okay? After the increase in temperature, 202.5 degrees Celsius, what is the final temperature of the bullet? How much, how much, how much, how much is the final temperature of the bullet? Okay, 236.5 degrees Celsius. It's pretty hot. Okay, it's pretty hot. Which is why you should, after shooting a bullet, I never hold the bullet. Okay, it's very hot because there's a very big change of uh, energy happening uh, in such a small thing. Okay, so a lot of increase in temperature. Okay, uh, which also probably explains... Uh, this is not a very good example, uh, but which also probably explains why people uh, after they get shot, uh, let's say you watch movies, lepas uh, kind of tembak, uh, they kind of say, oh, I feel very warm. It's because of the bullet. Okay? First, they feel very warm because of the bullet, and then of course, they feel very cold because they're dying. Uh, but they will feel very warm first because there's this big change of energy okay, in the bullet uh, that makes the bullet become very hot. Okay, so when the bullet masuk dalam badan kita, kan kita akan rasa panas because the bullet is hot itself. Lah. Okay, and then of course, when the person dies of the gunshot wound, okay, the person will feel cold. Lah, but okay, now let's not talk about that. Okay, so you know, there's always going to be this big change of energy. Lah. Why are we talking about dying so early? Okay, sorry. Last question. Okay, so a lead ball of mass. 320 grams. Okay, guys, see 320 grams. Let's immediately change this list. 0 0.32 kilograms. Nothing to think about. Let's immediately change it. Okay, drop from a height of 12 meters. The collision between the ball and the ground is completely inelastic. Okay, assuming all of the energy ball goes into heating it. Okay, now this assumption is very important. Huh? No energy loss to surroundings. Okay. Let's calculate the change in temperature of the ball. Okay? Change in temperature of the ball, people, refers to delta theta. Ini saja yang kita mau kira. Are we interested to know what is the original and the final temperature? No, we're not interested. I just want to know what is the increase of the temperature. Alright. So in this case, since it is dropped from a height, this is gravitational potential energy all exchange to become heat energy, mc delta theta. Okay, and our point is we want to count delta theta. Lah. Okay, so in this case, they give you the lead ball of mass 0 0.32. Since they give you my SLB, 0 0.32 times, okay, what is the value of G, people? Sorry, we've done this like so many times. Since chapter 2, we've been talking about the value of G. Value of G is 9.81. Very good. Okay, sorry. I don't know why I put this bracket here. And now I realize why I put the bracket there because I wanted to write the this one. Okay, fine. 9.81 times the height of 12 meters. Okay, equals to the M is still the same. 
okay, which is the ball, okay, 0 0.32 times C is 1, 2, A, and our calculation is delta theta. Okay, so if you notice, uh, in this case, they're buggy, okay, they gave the uh, mass of the ball, which actually is kind of pointless, lah, okay, because if you remember in our previous example, kalau dia orang tidak bagi pun itu jisim, okay, you can still, it will cancel each other out, okay, no problem, if they give, put it in, lah, might as well put it in, okay, alright, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, can you calculate for me what is the delta theta? Okay, so uh, quite a number of you have already calculated. Very good. All right. So, so the delta theta, the increase in temperature is 0 0.92 degrees Celsius. Okay. Just double check. Huh? Okay. If you find that the specific heat capacity, color dia bagi del degrees Celsius, then we know that our final answer is degrees Celsius. Color dia bagi Kelvin. Huh? Okay. Then we have to change this to Kelvin. Okay, but just an observation only. So notice uh, that the increase in temperature is very small, which is logical. Uh. Okay, take a look. If you drop a ball, there is going to be a slight increase in temperature, but it is so tiny that we don't really feel it. If we actually felt, uh, kalau let's say the increase in temperature is macam tadi the bullet 202 degrees Celsius, uh, then we have a big problem. We cannot play basketball. Okay, because every time you bounce the ball, uh, the temperature will increase, which is like, you know, we don't want that. Uh. Okay, but you know, the reason why there's an increase in temperature is because of the change in temperature. Okay, the potential energy all the way over here, when it hits the ground, okay, it's going to change into heat energy. Okay, so this is another example of a calculation that involves the transformation of energy. Okay, and I hope that in doing these four examples, especially the last two, lah, you realize that actually energy is transferred from one form to another. So don't separate it out. Okay, we need to look at situations uh, and think of it in terms of, oh, okay, change from what energy to what energy, what energy to what energy. Because this, uh, you studied in science lower secondary. You studied, oh, okay, if you turn on a fan, uh, it changes from electrical energy to kinetic energy. Now we are putting it into calculation, okay, which is suitable for your level uh, because you're already from four. Okay, you cannot just be talking about the change of energy. You have to calculate it. Okay, and that's why we study physics. Wow, that's how we study physics. All right, so uh, that's actually the end of the lesson. Uh, and um, what? Okay, so that's actually the end of the lesson uh, and for this subtopic. Okay, so I'm going to end this recording.